Now, let's recap and see what we covered in our first episode of this thrilling story of a stranger in familiar skin. John, after years abroad, returns to his hometown, Kalulushi, where the airport's familiar sights and sounds evoke a profound mix of joy and uncertainty. The warm reunion with his sister Tawonga at the airport is a comforting anchor amidst his conflicting emotions. As they drive through the city, John is struck by the changes Kalulushi has undergone, feeling both connected and alienated in this transformed landscape. Meeting his childhood friend Wamba in the city square, John is warmly embraced into the fold of his past. However, the city's evolution casts a shadow of displacement over him. Mumba's enthusiastic tour and the vibrant city life clash with John's nostalgia and sense of being an outsider. The episode culminates in a revealing conversation at a cafe, where M. Wamba expresses the city's need for John's help and perspective amid significant changes. This pivotal moment ignites a sense of purpose in John as he resolves to embrace the challenges of his transformed hometown. The story leaves us with John Nwamba stepping out into the Twilight City, symbolizing the beginning of John's journey in rediscovering his place in a city that has moved on without him. Stay tuned for more as John navigates the complexities of being a stranger in familiar skin. Now, let's continue with episode two of the story. I hope you will enjoy it. As John and Mwamba left the quaint suburban street, the evening sky stretched above them, a canvas of twilight hues. The visit to his childhood home had stirred a whirlpool of emotions in John, each wave crashing against the shores of his heart with the realization of time's relentless march. Walking side by side in comfortable silence, their footsteps were a soft symphony in the hush of the evening. John's mind was a tumult of thoughts and memories, each one a thread weaving through the tapestry of his past and present. I need some time alone. Mwamba John finally broke the silence, his voice a mixture of gratitude and determination. I need to process all this. Mwamba nodded understanding. Take all the time you need, my friend. Remember, I'm here for you. This city, it's not just about the buildings and streets. It's about the people, the memories, and the connections we forge. With a warm handshake that spoke volumes, they parted ways, Mwamba disappearing into the city's heartbeat while John continued his solitary walk. The twilight deepened, wrapping the city in a blanket of introspection, the stars above twinkling like distant beacons of hope. Scene 3 John's solitary walk through the streets of Kalulushi was more than just a physical journey. It was a passage through layers of time and memory. The twilight deepened around him, painting the city in hues of indigo and gold. Each step resonated with the echo of his past. The streets imbued with both the familiar and the foreign. The air was perfumed with a blend of earthy scents and the faint aroma of street food, evoking a sense of nostalgia intermingled with a sense of being out of place. As he wondered, the city's transformation was evident in every corner. New, modern buildings stood alongside old structures, creating a juxtaposition of the past and present. The neon signs and streetlights cast a kaleidoscope of colors, illuminating faces of the city's inhabitants, each absorbed in their own world, yet all part of the collective tapestry of Kalulushi's life. John paused by a vibrant mural, its vivid colors and intricate designs telling a story of cultural pride and progress. He watched as a group of teenagers laughed and took photos in front of it, their youthful energy a stark contrast to his introspective solitude. He felt a twinge of envy at their ease in this evolving city. A place he once called home but now felt like a visitor in. As he continued his walk, John's mind replayed the conversations he had earlier with Awonga and Mumtaga's updates about their family and friends, and Momba's insights into the city's changes. All of it swirled in his head, forming a mosaic of the life he had left behind and the new reality he faced. Their words were both a comfort and a reminder of the chasm that had grown between him and his homeland. 
Reaching an old park he once frequented, John was struck by its transformation. The playground had new equipment and the pathways were neatly paved. Yet, amidst these changes, the old fig tree stood tall and unyielding, its sprawling branches stretching out like arms ready to embrace him. He found a familiar bench under the tree and sat down, its presence offering a semblance of the continuity he craved. Under the tree, John let the ebb and flow of the park's life envelop him. Children's laughter rang through the air, mingling with the soft conversations of elderly couples recounting days gone by. Young lovers whispered sweet nothings under the soft glow of the park lights, and friends shared jokes and drinks on adjacent benches. This tapestry of life unfolding around him was a poignant reminder of the universal dance of time and change. John's gaze drifted to the night sky, where stars began to peek through the veil of dusk. He thought about the vastness of the universe and the smallness of his own existence within it. The stars had witnessed the rise and fall of civilizations, the birth and death of countless lives. Yet here they were, still shining down on him, indifferent and eternal. This cosmic perspective made his own troubles seem both significant and trivial at the same time. Lost in thought. John reflected on his life's journey. From the streets of Kalulushi to the foreign lands he traveled, each experience had shaped him. Yet now, returning to his roots, he felt the dissonance of a man caught between two worlds. The city he remembered was now a memory, replaced by this new, vibrant entity that he struggled to recognize. His thoughts were interrupted by the distant sound of music. A local band had started to play at the park's gaze bow. Their melodies, a fusion of traditional African rhythms and modern beats. The music was infectious, drawing people towards it, a magnetic pull of rhythm and harmony. John watched as the crowd gathered, their bodies moving in sync, with the music a celebration of the here and now. Feeling a surge of impulse, John stood up and moved towards the music. As he approached, the rhythm seemed to seep into his veins, urging him to let go of his reservations. For a moment, he hesitated, the familiar tug of restraint holding him back. But then, something within him shifted. It was as if the music had unlocked a part of him that he had kept hidden, the part that yearned to connect, to belong, to be free. He took a tentative step forward, then another, gradually moving into the rhythm of the dance. The crowd welcomed him, their smiles and nods, an unspoken acceptance. As he danced, John felt a release of the pent-up emotions he had carried, the joy, the sorrow, the longing, and the love. All of it flowed out of him in a cathartic release of movement. Dancing under the African sky, amidst the people of his homeland, John found a semblance of peace. The rhythm of the music echoed as the last notes of the band's music faded into the night. John felt a stirring within him. The dance, the music, the shared laughter had rekindled a sense of belonging that he hadn't felt in years. He was no longer just a spectator. He was becoming a part of the fabric of Kalulushi once again. Leaving the park with a lightness in his step, John decided to follow the distant sounds of music and laughter that beckoned him. The streets, now bathed in the soft glow of the setting sun, seemed to guide him towards the heart of the town. The twilight air was rich with the scents of sizzling meats and sweet pastries, drawing him closer to the source of the festivities. As he walked, John's mind wandered back to his childhood, to times when the whole community would come together in celebration. There was a comfort in knowing that some traditions remained untouched by time. A reminder that, in some ways, he was still tethered to his roots. Scene 4 The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm golden hue over the quaint town of Kalulushi. John, drawn by the tantalizing aromas and the distant sound of laughter and music, made his way towards the heart of the festivities. The air was rich with the scent of sizzling meats and sweet pastries, an olfactory tapestry that promised a feast not just for the body but for the soul. As John approached the town square, the vibrant display of colors and activity was overwhelming in its vitality. 
The square buzzed with life adorned with twinkling lanterns and streamers that fluttered like whimsical birds in the gentle evening breeze. Tables were laden with an assortment of delectable dishes, from steaming local delicacies to mouth-watering traditional sweets. Each stall was a showcase of culinary prowess, a testament to the community's rich and diverse heritage. John paused at the edge of the square, taking a moan to soak in the atmosphere. He felt a sense of dissonance, a traveller in his own homeland, yet the vibrancy of the scene before him was slowly chipping away at the walls he had built around himself. Groups of townspeople, families and friends mingled, their faces lit by the soft glow of the lanterns. Their laughter was a melody that resonated with the deeper chords of John's heart, evoking memories of times long past. Children ran about with a carefree joy that only the young possess, their cheerful voices adding to the symphony of sounds. Among the crowd, a woman approached him, her presence like a beacon. She had warm, inviting eyes that seemed to know him before even a word was spoken. You must be John, she said, her voice harmonious, reminiscent of a soothing song. Welcome to our gathering. I'm Clara and I'm thrilled to introduce you to our local customs and traditions. John felt a flicker of curiosity ignite within him. I'm eager to learn, he replied, his gaze captivated by the warmth in Clara's eyes. Clara led John through the various stalls, each a window into the town's rich cultural tapestry. At one stall, skilled artisans displayed intricate handicrafts, their fingers deftly weaving stories into cloth and wood. At another, elders shared tales of the town's history, their voices a bridge across generations. The air was filled with the sound of traditional music, a rhythm that seemed to pulse with the heartbeat of the earth. Dancers moved with a grace that spoke of a deep connection to their heritage, their feet tapping out rhythms that were as old as the hills yet as fresh as the evening breeze. John found himself drawn into the dance. His body remembering the rhythms and steps he thought he had forgotten. With each movement he felt a layer of his self-imposed exile peel away, revealing a man who was still, at heart, a son of Kalulushi. The dancers welcomed him, their movements a language that needed no words. As he danced, John felt a sense of liberation, a freedom that he had not known he craved. The music and the dance were like a balm to his soul, soothing the aches of years spent in foreign lands. As the night progressed, John and Clara found a quiet spot away from the bustle. They sat on a low wall, watching the celebration continue. Clara spoke of the town's changes and challenges, her words painting a picture of a community that had grown yet held fast to its roots. John listened, his heart swelling with a mix of pride and sorrow. He felt a connection to these stories, a thread that tied him to this place and its people. Clara's insights were a key, unlocking doors he had closed long ago, revealing a past rich with shared joys and sorrows. A group of musicians took to the stage their instruments, cradling centuries of tradition. The melody they played was haunting a song that seemed to resonate with the very soul of Kalulushi. John felt a shiver run down his spine as the music stirred memories he thought he had lost. With each note, a sense of recognition washed over him, a feeling that this music was a part of him, a part of his very being. He closed his eyes, letting the melody take him on a journey through time, to days when he was a young boy running through these streets, his laughter mingling with the music of his ancestors. Clara watched him, her eyes reflecting an understanding that went beyond words. She knew that this moment was a turning point for John, a step towards reconciling his past with his present. As the evening drew to a close, John felt a renewed sense of purpose take root within him. The gathering had been more than a celebration. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and tap the notification bell. Also, please share this story with your family and friends. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to discuss with me about the story or indeed the series we've been featuring on this channel titled 
how to build in Zambia while living in the diaspora, do get in touch. I'll make sure to respond to you. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video podcast next week.